Hi, my name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Today I'd like to play with one of my favourite toys which is the gel press, the jelly plate. And, uh, and I want to combine it with our new fresh cut dies. So that's quite interesting. I'll show you, I've had an idea. Um, let's just have a look at the products and then, and then we'll move on. So these are two beautiful dies that were illustrated by our good friend Mel Turner. These are just gorgeous. The Earth has music for those who listen. It's an aperture die. And then Be Still and Listen, The Earth is Singing. I mean, these are just fantastic, aren't they? So there they are, fresh cut dies, available from Clarity Stamp. Now, what I wanted to do was take those dies and then use them in, in, in a mixed media um, arena. So before we do that, let's have a look traditionally this is the die cut, there we are. Um, it's cut out, you can see it's an aperture die, so it's a beautiful paper cut really. We can frame it, we've got some designer paper, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, lovely stuff. Now, let's take this design, there's a second one with rabbits on it. This is the be still and listen, and I'm gonna go with the earth has music for those who listen. So if I, let's just have a look at the artwork that I wanna do with you today. And you'll see here, it's completely, uh, got a completely different feel. This is acrylic paint. This is a canvas board. Let's take a look here and we can see if you can get in tight on that. You'll see here, um, we've got a stencil work around the outside. Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting process. I think you'll enjoy this one. Doesn't take long, only three paints involved. So let's get started, shall we? It's a two-part process, three-part process. Let's do the background first and I'll show you how. So I'm gonna need my, my six by six gel press. So I've got that and I'm gonna put it on our Mega Mount, which we, we designed and, and uh, we make these as well. They, to me, it's obvious that you need, when you use a gel plate, you also need a Mega Mount and you'll soon figure that out in a minute. So we'll put the dies to one side because I don't need them right now. What we want, first of all, is the stencil. Let's get all our ducks in a row. We need the stencil. We need some, I'm gonna use some acrylic paint. De La, De La Rowney, is it? Yeah, De La Rowney. I've got um, Buff Titanium, Burnt Umber, and Fallow Blue. So just the three colors. And if we have a look at the artwork, we'll see here that the background, we've got the stencil, the brick stencil, and then we've all we've got all three of those colors, a mix of there. In fact, the background here is also a mix of those three colors. Anyway, I'll show you how it goes. So the thing about this as well, before we start, this is what I would call unpredictable art versus um, predictable art. This is predictable. I know exactly what I'm gonna get when I put it through that machine. This, it's always gonna be different. They are originals. This gel press will ensure that, that I'll never get to it of the same. So I can, I can show you the process now, but I, I, I can guarantee you that it won't be identical. I can just show you the process. So what we're gonna do first is mix up. I've got this here. Sometimes, I hadn't used these paints, paints for quite a long time. Sometimes there's a little bit of a sort of oily residue. And when you get that on your gel press or on your jelly plate, they're the same thing, just two different companies. When you, when you get that on the gel press, the, the prints won't pull. If, you, if it's got slick on it, wipe it away, start again. So what I'm gonna do is, to, so that I'm gonna mix my paint, I'm gonna put my paint on here, and then, see, let's have a look. If I, for example, I've been practicing before I came and did this. See, there's a little bit of oil there. So what I wanna do now is just take the first lot away so that I can, let's have a think. Blue down the bottom. Let's put a bit of blue down there. And then I'm just taking away the top, the top part of the paint. I know it's a bit wasteful, but I don't want the oil on here, see? So that's plenty. Thing about the gel press is it's really, you're looking more at what you have to figure out is how much you need, like that's way too much, and how long it takes to dry. So I'm just gonna get rid of some of the brown. It's all right, this is handy what I'm doing here. And then I'll mix it in with some of the blue, see? So I'll get rid of the excess. I've got twice as much as I need, really. If I was using a much bigger gel plate, this would be a lot more intelligent. But I'm not gonna start again. I'm just gonna start using another bit. That would make a lovely background. 
So let's have a look here. We're just going to spread this blue up now, watch. As I spread the blue up through the brown, it changes the colour really nicely. Okay, then I'm going to take my stencil, my brick stencil, and pop that in over the top like so. And then I'm going to start blotting it. So I'm going to blot the bits in between. I'll use the side of my hand like that. I did, um, I've done a brick uh, thing like this before a demo on YouTube and it was called, all, it's all vine now. That's quite good too. Um, similar sort of thing, but on a larger scale. But you see here, what I'm doing is I'm just blotting, because I use so much paint, I want to get rid of some as well. But these are made nice backgrounds, you know. I don't throw anything away. Um, in fact, I'll hang on to that and I'll make another one. Let's have a look. So. You can see here, we've got quite a lot of paint going on. That's all right, I don't want it too dark. So we'll just blot and wait and blot and wait and blot and wait. Right, that might make a very nice background. See, so what you've got to do is decide how dark or light you want it. If I was to blot this now, see underneath the, underneath the stencil, the paint is still wet, I know that. So what I can do now, for example, if I take this one off, I'll take that off and I can wait a little while so I don't lose the lines. Still quite a lot of wet paint on there but I reckon if I blot that now, right, you'll see, right, we like to get messy. Right, you can see there's still some paint on there and now I've blotted it. So that is the first layer. Let's have a look what we've got here and you'll see there's the blues and the browns down there and the lighter brown up there. And you see the buff titanium, that's the, the lighter color. That's the next thing we're gonna use. However, we need to make a block so that we can cut this dye out. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece, of, not yet, but I'm gonna put a piece of this down on here. And I've got a plan. And this just happens to be exactly the same size as the dye, see? Like so. Okay, so keep that handy. Don't forget to use it grey. And then I'm going to take that out of here because I might use that in a minute for the background. Need another bit of copy paper. And I'm going to use my buff tit Amy, titanium. All right, so I've got my brown. Don't need that, don't need that. Do you like using the gel plate? I love it. I love it. I haven't used it for a while, but I think... I ought to start playing with it a bit more again. We just got so much going on at work and you just get caught up in other stuff. I'm just getting rid of the, just in case there's an oil. I find that the De La Rowney paint is very, very good for the jelly plate. Now, the next thing is we want to pull this whole thing. So let me think it through for a minute so I don't make a mistake. I, I'm going to do this on copy paper because I want to wrap it around a, um, I want to wrap it around a canvas. Right, so now, I'm just going to, I wonder if, I'll put it on here, I've just got a feeling, right, if I put it on here, and then I spread it out on here first, right, then I'm avoiding any issues if there's a potential um, oil, like a little bit of oil residue, this will work nicely. See, so you put this one down, right, and you've got your layer there, right, so that's the first thing, and now you just start gently, not too hard, see, up. North, south, east, west, north, south, east, west. Right, and then the idea is that this paint is going to release the, the whole lot, the brick wall as well. So we pop that down. Now this is just a piece of card, so it's absorbent, isn't it? So the, the, the plan is that that's going to make a, an opening. It's, it's really nice if it works. Right, and then I need a bit of copy paper. And then, see what I could do now is, to, see that's why this is so good if it's on a, I can turn this over and I can see exactly what it's going to look like and where it's going to go. Right, so I'll do that. I think I've got it the right way around. Well, we'll soon find out, won't we? It's all part of the journey. I think this is one, this is one of those art processes, especially, don't put it in there, Gray. It's one of those art processes that is really um, uh, interesting and you can't, you can't predict the outcome. Right, but now what I should be able to do, here we are, you see, when I pull this off, 
Look at that. Check it out. So what you've got now is a really, really lovely frame. And I happen to know that that will sit in there because I made the hole big enough, didn't I? The aperture. And if, I, if you think it through, let me just get you, if I could show you this, the logical process, now you'll understand that the white here, the die, is this cut out of that, that opening. And um, just makes it jump out. And we've also got a really nice watch. When I take that off there, that completely, see that's a lovely little um, something rather. <laughs> I've got loads of these. Right, so that's that. This, this gel press has done its job now. And so we'll put that over there. We've got some nice scraps. I might, do you mind if I just clean this up because I can see it. I can see the writing on the wall. If I just get rid of this excess paint, do I need any more paint? No, just put the lids on, if you don't mind. Right, I love this stuff, actually. I think in all the years that I've been crafting, which is, well, I, well 25, 26 years now, um, I think if I've got any regrets, it's that I didn't figure out acrylic paint a little bit sooner. That is a pity, because it is fantastic gear. Right, let's see if I just get rid of this excess. Right. See, it's got something, it's, it's almost like, what I, 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 it's akin to a plastic tablecloth for me. And if I could take a dye-based ink and I rub it over there, it just, it acts like a, like a mask. It's very, very good, very, very good stuff. So the next thing we want to do, right, we've got this now. So let me just get back to where I was. Da -da. So you can see now, just thinking it through, now I want to cut the, the aperture, don't I? So I'm going to take my The Earth Has Music. That's going to sit in there like that. See, it's logical, isn't it? This should work quite well. So now I know what I'm doing, right? Ready, ready, ready. Got it in the right place. I need my Gemini. I think one of the things is that I, I enjoy is, you know, we did stamps for so many years, clarity stamps, we invented see-through stamps, been doing those forever. And then a few years ago, we introduced the stencils, like the bricks and the, you know, it's got beautiful stencils. And then we started combining the, the stencils with the, um, with the stamps. Then along came the groovy. So then we started, that was all parchment art. So then we started integrating the groovy and all the parchment art with the, um, with the stamps and the inks and, the, and that side of the business. And so now we've, we go into the next place where we're, we're taking dyes and we're putting them to, to the stencils and the mixed media, which is usually dyes tend to be quite a clean, sort of predictable type of art. So I think this is quite interesting. Right, so we've got that in place. Can you see that all right? Right, that's, that's tied down, not too much. I reckon this will be all right. If it goes wrong, you know what it's supposed to look like. Let's just sort this out. So sandwich, Cutting plate down, got that. Right, then I'll take my frosty one, like so. I'll take my magnet shim, just because I need that thickness. Then I'll take my other plate. I mean, this works, of course it does, it's a die. You just cut it out of that aperture, that hole. Okay. So I'll take that off, I'll take that off. And now what you'll find is, let me just take this off here, a bit of static. Right. The, the, some of the, um, the dye YouTubes are really cool too. You, you might want to have a look at, we've got quite an extensive library on our YouTube. We've got beautiful designs. These aperture dyes are pretty spectacular. And I'm showing you now that they work really well. Have I got something to put this in? Just a moment. Whee! Tom Wheels! <laughs> Oh, right, we'll just put all this bit in here. Um, have a look on another YouTube of the dies where I show you what you can do with all this stuff, all the stuff that we're throwing away here. That's very cool too. Just thinking outside the box. That's what we do at Clarity. Right, so I'm just going to pop that in there. And why am I using this? This is one of our friend's ideas, D. If you put this on there, it protects the plate so the cutting edge doesn't dig into the plate, cut into the plate too much. 
Right, so there you go. That's all nice and clean. Quality, quality, quality. Right, nice dies, fresh cuts. We might have joined the party late, but we certainly brought the gear with us. Now, let's have a look at what we've got. Let's just regroup because we've done our cutting now. Don't need that anymore. See how nice is that? So we've got that now. We've got our opening. Check out, see? Same, same sketch, isn't it? So how did I do the background? Well, actually, believe it or not, the background, you know when I was rolling off the brayer, the background in that one is just the scraps, like that. And if you, if you look now, if I take this and I put it there, there we are, that's exactly what it is. And, and I spent ages trying to do a lovely background, but in the end, I found that it was the scraps that gave me the best ones. Look, see? You can see where I've just cleaned the brayer. This is a particularly nice one. Now let's just stop for a moment because I want to show you. You can see how you can make a landscape. Isn't that superb? So you can, and it's all right to have a bit of white so you can put more blue in. This is just the secret. The only thing I would say is that I've used the same three paints, those same three colors for the background, obviously because they were the scraps. So whichever one you choose to go with, whichever one you, you prefer, you might like that one or maybe that one, a bit dark, I don't know. Um, this was a gel press one that I did, thinking that I might be, it might be better, but to be honest, I think the scraps are better. So if you take that one now, then what we've got to do, let me just talk you through this and then you'll, you'll get it, right? Because it's, it's obvious when you when you see it. What we've got to do now is wrap this. I'm just looking. Here we are. This is a canvas board, a six by six. And then what we do is we stick it on to an eight by eight. So it goes like that, and that goes like that. That's what we do. That's what I do. So you can see now. But that's the background's got to be stuck in place first. So I'm gonna now. Let's just go with this one. I've decided I'm using that one and I can make my mind up now which part of this I want. You see? So I'm thinking that I probably want to go, it's a bit dark, isn't it? What do you think? I wish I'd thought about this earlier. Sort of just talk to, go and put the kettle on while I make a decision, will you please? Mine's uh, strong with milk, thank you so much. Right, you're back. Thank you. Let's have a look. So I've decided I'm going to go in this area here, like that. So provided that the front, now how do we stick this down first? This, I mean, there are lots of different ways to do this. This is just my idea. So I'm going to put it like that. Then I'll turn it over. I've got scrap on the back of the, actually that looks quite good. <laughs> Can I just have a quick look to see if I prefer that one? Hang on a minute. Too busy, back to this one again. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is just, just show you how this assembly works. So I'll turn it over like so, and then I need, um, I need a pen. Just bear with me a minute. Oh, here, anything will do. Right, so, so what I've got to do now is just cut this out so that it sits behind the other thing. See, so I've got to cut that out like that, and then I know that it's got to go to there, uh, about to there. I just want to cut this back so I know what I'm dealing with. I don't want to cut the wrong bit out, do I? So now I'm going to go, just cut this off. It's all right, there's a method in my madness. I've got to put the back down, attach the back to the, this bit before I can really put it on a, on a canvas board. See, so then that is going to go like that on there. And we'll turn that round. Right, so now that's where we're going there. Do you see? All right, okay. So this is going to wrap around. So now I can go a bit I can go a bit tighter, can't I? Do you see what I'm getting at? I reckon I can come in a bit tighter. Don't go too mad though, Gray. So that's that. The less the less paper there is, the easier it'll be to wrap. So go like that. Like that. It's quite a lot on that side. Right, I reckon we're nearly there now. Just that bottom edge has got quite a lot of... See, if you've got that, I've got to wrap that. I've got two layers then to wrap around a canvas. That'll do. 
Okay, so I've got my scene now. Look, that looks like a beach. Isn't that lovely? We've still got a bit of wiggle room. So you can put the... You decide. Like that's good there. Okay. So now I've done that, let me just think this through. Now I'll turn that over like that. Right, that's where I'm going to have it. So I'm going to do that. Bit crooked. Doesn't matter, does it? Provided that it covers up the... It makes no difference. You're probably screaming at the telly now going, that is so not the way to do it. But hey-ho, my rad, my rules. This is how I do it. Now what I want to do is take that off. Do you know, it'd be easier if I turn it around so I'm... I don't want to get the brown bit in the bottom. That's right, like that. So I turn it over like that. It's all very logical. <laughs> Have you fallen asleep yet? This is good. Now this gear's good. This is called, this is from Germany. It's called Decoupage Kleber on Lack, which is like an adhesive. We sell this stuff. It's good stuff. Um, it like Mod Podge, similar. It's a kind of a glue sealant. Now. Just bear with me a moment, because I did have a paintbrush. Here they are. I need a paintbrush. So I'm going to state my intention. What I'm going to do is just stir this up a little bit, right? Just so that it's not just got this look on the top. And then I'm going to put the paint, uh, the, the sealant, on the front, on this bit here. Okay, so this is the... Because this is quite delicate, isn't it, the die-cut bit? So I've got to try and catch all those little bits, the little words and the flowers, right? I reckon this will be right. I might have overcooked it a bit here. Put that to one side so you can see. Can you see all right what I'm doing? Right. Right. Patience is a virtue. Right. I reckon that will do the job. I'll put that down there. It's sticky, isn't it? Right. Now it's stuck. Okay. So turn that round. Don't worry about the edges. We'll sort that out in a minute. And then this is going to stick down like that in the right place where we decided we were going to put it, like so. Okay. And then, obviously, it's going to stick underneath as well. So be aware of that, right? But you see, now that's in the right place, isn't it? So the rabbits... So what I'll do now is, before it dries, I'm going to press hard on the back. I reckon this will work. Hey, in for a penny, in for a pound. So now I've done that. Just got to be aware that there's glue here, see? But I've got my little figures all set now. I'll just get rid of this sealant on here. Right, and you see now that works really well. So I've got my, my background. I've set that in place. Any pla anywhere where it's a little bit, where it's raised, just go in with your fingers and just tidy that up. That looks good to me. I don't want to fiddle with it too much. And you know what? When it dries, it any buckles, they all they all straighten out anyway, which is fine, isn't it? So we'll just get rid of that. That needs to go in water so that it doesn't get um, wrecked, right? So I'll do that in a minute. But in the name of art, right, that will work. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is wrap this around a canvas. So to do that, we're just gonna. Hold this up to a light source. So this is a four by four canvas. So I'm gonna just hold this up to a light source. Just bear with me a second. So I can see exactly when I do this, well, I should be able to see it. Let me just find a light source. I reckon, see so you want it, you want it, the, you want it right, definitely. Like so. We'll pop that down. Now this time, these are the these are the um, registration marks. Okay, that's the same there, that there, and that one there. So if I'm right, let me just check because I have a feeling the light in here is not great. Let me just see if I can roll this round. Oh yeah, that's going to work. Right. Okay. So then all we're going to do is just cut this back. And then I'll take this and I'll put my on here and then we'll let it, we'll just set that on and then uh, 
Right, so this is going to be nice and wet. We're coating. We don't put the, um, the sealant on the artwork. We put the sealant on the little canvas board. These are great little canvas boards. Difference between a card and a piece of artwork. So we'll go like so, and then we'll add that to that like so. So that's in the right place. We know it is. We press on there. Now, when I turn this round, let's have a look. Let's check. I don't want to do it wrong. You see, this is going to sit on there beautifully. Let's just have a look. Right, so that's going to sit on there like so, isn't it? And then we're going to wrap that round there like so. So I'll open that up one more time. And then what I'm going to do is take a piece of copy paper and I'm just going to add some more Mod Podge or sealant to the sides like this. And then you just wrap around like this. Right, and because we've used copy paper, this is the magic, because it's copy paper, it's really easy to just fold in like this. You see? See what I'm doing? So we just fold it in so simply, like so. And then I've done two sides, then I'll do the next two sides, like this. And the thing is that all that all gets sandwiched behind. Got a little bit, I thought I was a bit off, but it doesn't matter. Nice white echo. <laughs> there we are. So we close it like so. We're just going to wrap round there. Could have gone over a little bit to the other side, but do you know what? It's good enough, isn't it? Then we're going to take that, and then we're going to take double-sided adhesive sheet, and that gets attached to that, like that. And then, it, I told you no two are ever the same, didn't I? I mean, there we are. So that's what it looks like. And see how you can change it with the back? It's so cool, actually, isn't it? So I hope that you enjoyed that one. Um, you can see here how it works. Uh, if, you, if you like this, give it a go. It's, these dies are pretty spectacular, even if I say so myself. Uh, do hop over to our website to check out all the lovely products that we have. And, uh, and I blog every day. And uh, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.